Welcome to the Faith and Work Hour with your host, Anthony Knight, and my co-host, Elder Adrian McBride. Um, we got a very special guest today. Um, I knew this gentleman from previous, previously, in my previously employer. Um, but before we get started on it, we're going to let Adrian bring us in on a prayer as he does every Wednesday. I keep on getting that Wednesday. Holy and gracious Father, before you ask you for anything, Father God, we say thank you. Thank you for redeeming us back to you. Father God, let the words and the things that we say today inspire somebody. But also, Father God, let it be directed from you. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray for this hour. Amen. 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 And this young, this young gentleman, <laughs> I, I, met his, my uh, <laughs> I met his wife. I thought that was his uh, daughter. Daughter. <laughs> that's, now, that's what he said. Now, I didn't say that, but that's what I thought he was. Uh, yeah. She's a very young, a lovely young woman. But this young gentleman, me and him got a little bit of past, and he's uh, a very good friend of mine. I'm going to let him introduce you. How you doing, Mr. Well, Park? I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so yes, much. Sir. I appreciate you having me. Uh, uh, yeah, my name's Trace Parker. I, I work with these guys at, at Wiley Sanders. Uh, been out there about three, coming up on three and a half years. Uh, me and Anthony worked together at Max Hughes Trucking uh, back for about five and about five years mm -hmm. or so, five and a half years. So me and him worked together, kind of handling the short haul stuff and got to be real good friends. I, uh, the job with both of these guys, the jobs they do. But uh, like I said, I had the opportunity to work with him very closely and uh, we uh, we see a lot of things eye to eye when it comes to family and, and you know, loving our company and loving our country and, and God is strong faith. Uh, we see eye to eye on all that stuff. So it, it really makes for a great friendship that me and him have had over the years. And um, he's done so much to help our company uh, that while he's uh, far as helping us finish train people, uh, showing folks how to use the e-logs uh, just has been an, a real, real asset to us uh, in respect to that. I. Uh, but anyway, I'm. I'm. Uh, what all else you want me to cover? I mean, I'm, uh, <laughs> where I'm from, and uh, yeah. a little bit interesting. Well, what do you? Uh, now, 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 you can correct me. Man, you've been known about eight years. Man, you oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, five, well, five and a half five, there, and then been at Wiley's. So yeah, it's it's been close to ten years, really. Me and you really ain't never had a blow up. We ain't never, except with the Florida State Alabama business. Beyond <laughs> that, we don't have a blow up. And uh, the thing I like. It's hard to blow up on people do their jobs. Well, you, right. know? <laughs> you know, I turned it up. It's, I, so I'll just put it's just real simple. That, that's you, you do your job, you do it well. And yeah. folks that do that, they, you know, other than me telling them thank you for what you do, you're probably not going to hear a lot from me unless you need me and come to me and ask me for something. I'll leave you alone, let you do your job. <laughs> that's it. Well, that gentleman that's sitting to your left, um, he the one that started e -Log. See, I had no idea about e -Log. And he started telling me about it. And I said, well, let me look into this and see how we can do this. So he know more about the e-log than I do. I and did. I, <laughs> I did know did. more. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it, it just, it's something that sooner or later, it's everything evolves, everything changes. Um, you are the president of Wiley Sanders. I am. I am. See, I, I know what? you skipped, I know you what? skipped All that part. All this time I get to see this president of yeah, he, I didn't know that. Well, he skipped that part. I, I called him. <laughs> yeah, like, I know it. He's yeah. humble. He's too humble. I don't, uh, I am. I mean, I came from a humble family. I came from humble parents and, you know, I, I'm humble. <laughs> well, as simple as that. I'm also a crier too. So if yeah. I, if I get on a subject that means a lot to my heart and I tear up, that's just me. <laughs> don't. That's just the way. It's good stuff though. It's good yeah. tears. Uh, I just, I don't know, as I get older, my heart seems to get tender. I don't know. I don't get it. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I'll cry on you in a heartbeat. But it's just, But it's tell us a stuff. little bit about your duties as far as president. Because everybody well, think it's an easy job, but it's not as easy you know, as it seems. I, I, I'll tell you, it, it's, you know, I, I've been in trucking now for about 35 years. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, I worked at Boyd Brothers. Start, actually started at Wiley Sanders in 89 as mm. a night dispatcher. Wow. And uh, worked there for about six months, left there, went to Boyd Brothers, uh, worked with Boyd for about 25 years. I was uh, VP of, of operations there. Uh, got opportunity uh, to come back to Troy and work for Bobby. He hired me at Max Hughes Trucking. Uh, worked over there five and a half years and then wound up back at Wiley's uh, as president. Uh, you know, so kind of in that 30, probably that 30, 33 years, uh, I just kind of made a full circle. Yeah. It's kind of back to Wiley's, you know, and uh, man, what a blessing it's been. I mean, it's, it's who I, I've been, 
that's one of the moments I, I mean, I've just been so blessed. I mean, I really have, but, um, you know, I, I use a little different style of management probably than most people do out there. I mean, I'm not one of these, uh, managed people with an iron fist or a hammer or whatever. I, I just don't believe in that. I believe in, and you, you get the right people in the right positions, mm -hmm. um, and, and you train them to do their job. And, and once you do that, you let them do their job. Now you, you monitor, and you ask questions, but but if you got the right people in the right place, and that goes all the way down to your driver force. Mm -hmm. If you got the right people, man, things go easy. It makes it easy. But getting back to the job, uh, you know, and and when you're in operations, you you kind of it's kind of your hair's on fire, man. I mean, there's <laughs> always something going on. Y'all yeah. know what it is. It's mm -hmm. in that dispatch, and that that's kind of the environment in trucking that I've always worked in. Is that kind of I call it your hair on fire, but. Uh, when I took this job, it, it, it's, a, it's a different type of stress. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, a, I had to learn to cope with it. Matter of fact, I had a little blood pressure issues to begin with. I had to get that. But it's, it's a weighted stress. I, 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 feel, I feel responsible for everybody. Yeah. And when something goes wrong, you know, I, I take it to heart. I mean, it's, it's my job uh, to take care of everybody. But I also, the way I view my job is y'all don't work for me, I work for y'all. I mean, that, that's literally the way I live my job every day because if I'm not taking care of y'all and taking care of the issues that y'all have to where you can't do your job, then I'm not doing mine. So, man, I don't get up on this president pedestal at all. I just, I, I don't. Amen. I, I don't. I mean, I just, I like to talk to people. Y'all see me out on the yard yep. a lot. I spend a lot of time talking to folks, but uh, it's because I love people, you know, and I love talking to them. And I don't, I don't think you can manage a company sitting behind a desk all day. You know, I mean, yep. you just, you need to know the folks you work with. And I think they appreciate you getting out and talking to them. Oh, amen. Uh, uh, Cause I mean, I, I don't, man, I put my pants on like everybody else every day. And I ain't never felt like I was better than anybody else. And my mom and dad were the same way. I don't know if you remember this. It's a story I'm gonna tell what happened at Max. This one, I figured out who you were. Um, my truck was going in the shop. And I asked uh, the guy that was over there, I said, well, can I use that truck? And he said, no, you can't use that. He tried to give me another one. So I came to Trace. I said, you know what? I said, they got my truck in the shop. They wouldn't let me use it. So they can just call me. I'm going home. They can call me when they get ready. This gentleman got out of his chair, walked out there in the shop. I didn't follow him. Came back. Well, you can get truck 187. I don't know what you said. Well, but you went and got that truck. I was finna go home, but he, <laughs> he's the one. You you one of these 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 uh, gentlemen that's in, in in upper management that don't don't mind associating with the drivers, and that's something that a lot of companies you can't. A lot of companies I've been with, the president doesn't even come out of it. A lot of them I ain't even seen the president. And I, and I, I agree with you. I mean, I know a lot of them that manage that way, and I just you know, and if that works for them, great. I'm yeah. not busting on yeah. them, but. Uh, I don't know, man. I think people appreciate you more when you get out there and, and, and spend time with them and, and let them actually get to know who you are. And because, uh, man, I'm gonna tell you, we we our company truly does care about people. I mean, all the way from Stephen and Kelly up at the top, you know, and and uh, coming all the way down. I mean, we we truly care about people. And if folks will just give us a chance, you yeah. know, that's all it takes is just stay and give us a chance to to prove what we can do. I mean, I, there's really nothing that can ever come up that we can't, you know, overcome. I mean, we can if we, we're, and, and I always feel like we're much stronger united than oh, trying to do it by yes, yourself, sir. you know. Yes, so sir. Uh, I rally around my troops and what a great team we've got out there. Uh, I was at the Alabama Trucking Association this past weekend and man, I'm telling you, it's amazing the reputation we have out there. Folks respect us. And that's come all the way back from the Mr. Wiley days coming up uh, and, and being a successful business. There's a lot of respect there for Wiley Sanders companies. Uh, and man, I'm just blessed and happy to be a part of it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, you um, you earned my respect. Well, I and I'm going to show you how you earned it. <laughs> I'm going to show you how you earned it. I was at Southern Classic and I called you and I said, I got a problem over here. I said, I, I'm not going to mention the altercation, but I was an altercation. And this is when you earned my respect. You told me, you said, I got your back. I just told you basically what happened. A lot of people said, let me look into it. That's not what you said. 
you knew my character and you know I don't go trying to start anything. That's right. And once I told you that was the first thing that came out your mouth, you said, I got your back. Don't worry about it. And that right that earned all the respect because not a lot of people would do that. Yeah. But you know, man, you, you, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to make that decision had I not gotten to know you. That's right. That's why I'm saying it's important to get to know your people. That's right. Yeah. Yep. I mean, all the way down to the driver level now. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I, you know, I, and I encourage these guys and I have a lot of, I mean, I had a guy come to me the other day. He had a, he had a, an idea about mm -hmm. something on the yard and y'all know with new equipment. Now, you know, it's not as good as it used to be. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes we have to get in another truck and drive it while they fix ours. Yeah. Well, he came to me with an idea and, and William Wallace is who it was. He came to me say, hey, you know, and he said, you reckon we could get something to when we have to switch trucks at, Maybe you can pull up and, you know, like a little dock area, like oh, a little okay. cross dock where you can just move your stuff from one truck to the other without yeah. having to step up and down yeah. and, and do all that. And I was like, you know, that's a, I, I'm glad you brought that up because we had, we put one of those when I was at Boyd mm -hmm. for guys to uh, to swap trucks in. So, you know, we're going to look into getting something like that out on the yard where, you know, I don't like to have the guys to have to swap trucks, but sometimes you just really don't have a choice, you yeah. know. Uh, so if we're going to do it, let's try to make it as easy on everybody as we can, you know, because that, that getting up and down and, uh, you know, you twist an ankle, twist a knee, all kinds of stuff can happen, especially when you're carrying stuff. So, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. I have an open door policy. Folks will come in and talk to me, and I like that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, they're always, you know, I hate the idea that you're not bothering me. Man, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's my job. I mean, I, I don't ever want anybody to feel like when they talk to me that they're bothering me because I'm going to put everything I got on hold yeah. and I'm going to give you the time that you do. I mean, I'm just going to do that. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, they preach an open door, but that's they right. don't live it. Uh, I, I try to live it. Uh, well, I can confirm that <laughs> because I've walked up out of the blue and told and your secretary, so who you are, told him, and all I hear in the back, Tell them to come on back. <laughs> and you do allow drivers to come in there and talk. Oh, sure. And that is it. And that well, is and that's it. why I like being right there in front. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've had an opportunity to move to a different office, and I'm like, no, nah, I like being right here. So you, know? you do. So we know your job is stressful. What do you do to unwind? What, what, what uh, outdoor activities or what do you do to, well, to, to relax? Huge turkey hunter. I love the turkey hunt. Matter of fact, I've been taking Thomas Hicks is one of our fleet managers mm. out there. He's got a, a son, Ridge, and man, we've been trying to get that boy, and, and we are just snake bit. I mean, it's <laughs> it just seems like everywhere we turn, we something happens or doesn't that pan out, and and uh, man, that is such a good kid too. I'm uh, I literally made it a mission to get that boy a turkey, so I, I've got to figure out a way to get him to get him a turkey. But I I also like to fish. Okay. Uh, I you know I'm born and raised in Port St. Joe, Florida, so I grew up on the coast. Uh, kind of got away from fishing for a few years up here and got into hunting and deer hunting. And I'm, I don't care a lot about the deer hunting anymore. Still like the turkeys, but I've kind of got back into doing a little bit of fishing. You know, as a, I figure I can do that a lot older. So, <laughs> what kind of fish do you? Uh, what kind of we fish we do, like? we we do offshore. You know, uh, deep sea fish. We uh, uh, being down there, I've got a lot of friends, and you know, been fortunate to to. Uh, be that have a lot of good spots down there to mm -hmm. fish so uh, it really makes it nice being from down there of course i tell you that uh that community is is drastically changing uh new people coming in you know it's a it's a it used to be called one of the most undiscovered beaches in the mm -hmm. in, in the country but it ain't undiscovered no more there's <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of folks coming in down there but it's still a great great place to grow up uh you know my folks uh been down there since the late 1800s. Wow. Uh, my uh, great grandparents are married are buried right in that area, and, and also we've been there a long time, uh, you know. And I just I don't know. My mom and dad were, you know, good people, mm -hmm. uh, and they it was important to them for their children to be good people. That's it. What kind of fish do you like? Uh probably the. I tell you, I've got. There's a, and it's funny story about these type of fish. It's mm -hmm. called triple tail grouper, kind of an inshore fishing uh, that you catch them. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I remember one time when I was a kid, I brought one of my, we used to do a lot of scuba diving and spear fishing. Mm -hmm. And I had speared one with a spear gun and brought it home. I didn't know what it was. I'd never <laughs> seen a fish because I, I don't know if you've ever seen a triple tail, but it, 
it almost looks like it's got an armor plate on it. It's kind of a prehistoric really? looking fish. Hmm. And uh, I brought it home to ha ask my dad. I said, what is this? And daddy said, oh, I said, it's a triple tail. He said, they're okay. But now folks will kill you for them. Man, they really? love, oh man, that's <laughs> one of the hottest items down there on the menu is triple tail grouper. And, and it's funny how some of those fish over the years have evolved because some of that stuff, like my dad, you know, in the summertime, some you, some fish will get worms, mm -hmm. and, and, you, and you, you have to cut them out. They get worms along their backbone, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the fish that did that, my dad wouldn't hardly eat them. So uh, some of the stuff they eat now, my dad used to call them trash fish. <laughs> 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 but it's funny how times have changed, and you know, they, of course, we're talking 30, 40 years ago, yeah. you know, so. When do you do the most of your turkey? And what do you do? You use uh, I know a lot of seem I, I watch a lot of shows. They use a crossbow. Yeah, we, we I, I've killed them with bows, mm -hmm. uh, but but most of the time, folks are shooting shotguns. Oh, they, okay. uh, you know, they've even got these super tungsten bullets now, where folks are shooting four tens at them and killing them. It's uh, Anything it's ain't uh, left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a this is a type of this is just a bullet. That's oh, okay. a uh, it's a you can use a smaller pellet because it's got about the same weight as lead. It's very dense and heavy. Oh, okay. So it's just a different type of those. Everybody's complaining because they're selling little five boxes of shells for about 70 bucks. <laughs> so they're expensive shells, but they're good. But uh, but anyway, I, I haven't toted a gun probably in about eight years. Uh, okay. I, I just take folks and call. Uh, really don't care nothing about shooting one anymore. Really? Um, I just like to like to see it happen, and mm -hmm. I love to take you know uh, like kids that have never killed a turkey. Man, there's it's just nothing like that in the world to me. The excitement that that mm -hmm. kid gets and the the hyperventilating breathing, and <laughs> I mean it's just unreal. They get so excited when they finally connect, and mm -hmm. uh, man, to to give a kid that kind of joy, whoo, something else, buddy, something else. So do you do any camping or anything like that on the outs on the outdoors? You know, dude, as long as they got hotels, I ain't much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I used to camp all the time when I was a little kid, and all. Yeah. But man, I, you know, in the cooler months, I could deal with it all. But I'm just not a big bug, man. Nah, you know, I'm not one either. I mean, I just I don't like to get it. And 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 of course, down in Port St. Joe, where we spend a lot of our weekends and and summer. Uh, you know, there's places down there where those bugs will eat you up. Those little no see oh, and yeah. yellow flies and uh, mosquitoes. Uh, pretty tough down there on that coastal area there. Uh, thank goodness you can kind of get away from them when you go offshore and fish yeah. if you get offshore a little ways. So. That's a, uh, I, I remember when um, you used to have, a, I know when we was at Max, I remember you had a big boat. Yeah, I had that uh, that Key West boat. I, yeah. I sold it and got a bigger boat. <laughs> uh, it was it, that boat was about twenty two. The one I got now is about twenty eight, mm. um, and that's 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 all the boat I need. I don't I don't want anything any bigger than that. I yeah. I don't and, and we don't do a ton of fishing yeah. because you know me and my wife that's kind of our common ground is boat yeah. riding, and we do a lot of just riding. You know we'll we'll run the intercoastal to Appalachian eat eat lunch and stuff like that. They enjoy the boat ride. So we do way more of that than we do fishing. You know, I, I told her when I got into it, I wasn't going to make work out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I have a tendency to get gung-ho into stuff and yeah. go, go 90 to nothing, but I promised her I wasn't going to do that on the fishing thing. You ain't no golfing, man. Huh? You ain't no golfing, man. Yeah, I golf yeah, some, yeah. but I hadn't golfed in probably the last three or four years. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. You know, used to do a fair amount of golfing before I got married, but you know, you, you go out there on a weekend and play golf. It's fun. I enjoy it. But, man, that's almost a whole day away, you know. And I just <laughs> – me and my wife, we're away from each other yeah. working. She works late hours, you know. And, uh, I mean, it's just – yeah. I, I, I need my weekend with my wife, you know. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy spending time with her. So, yeah. I, I, yeah. Don't, I don't try to find things on the weekends that pull me away from her, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to coach hey, her into enjoying fishing just a little bit more. So they need to spend more time together. <laughs> well, I'm not a big golfer. I've never golfed. But the one on the other side of you does like to golf. Likes to golf, huh? I don't get as much as in golfing as I want to. Me and Mr. Richard Ray Foley to go play some golf in one day. Well, I'm sure Richard will take you. It's, uh, you know, the problem is, of course, I know uh, you, you got to, I mean, you got to play a lot of golf to get good. 
I mean, you just do. I mean, you got to play a lot. And I just, you know, I'm just not willing to put that kind of time. <laughs> it is so, of, yeah. And I really don't like, you know, uh, not being a, in anything I do, I want to try to be good at, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and uh, I just don't have the time to play golf enough to get really good at it. And, uh, you know, it's a funny story. Uh, I used to go out there and play and, you know, you go out there and you have a decent round, you come home, you're happy, but you have a bad round, you come home and you eel, <laughs> maybe a broke club or two in your bag. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and my wife, I tell you about, I came home one time and I was ill as a hornet, played terrible. You know, I think I broke one of my clubs. <laughs> and, you know, Pamela, when I walk in the door, she, and I'm grumpy, you know, and, and she says, she said, you know, I've been trying to think about this this thing here. She says, we pay this amount of money for you to be in the country club. You go out there, you come home, you break your clubs, <laughs> you come home, you're ill because you played a bad <laughs> round, and we're paying money for you to feel that way. <laughs> and I was like, Boy, she's got a valid point there. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know what it is. Just I really and truly, after about that day, I really didn't let it bother me anymore, you know? Yeah. And to be honest with you, I started playing better. Because, yeah. I mean, golf is such a between-the-ears game. Oh, yeah. Uh, man, I'm telling you, you get out there one day and you get to – you get out of whack or whatever, you man, your game, the wheels will come off of it. <laughs> yeah, I can believe that. Yeah. If I can get 100, I'm good. As long as I score 100, I'm happy. Hey, yeah, I'm happy. I get it. Stay <laughs> under 100. <laughs> I didn't break 100 today, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'm mad. That's right. There you go. That's so, it. your golf game basically like Florida State. Is pretty yeah, much, pretty much. We ain't doing it, great. We ain't doing great. But, hey, you know, we got some good recruits, it's looking like. so. Every year, we, we go through the same routine. You got good recruits. And every year, at the end of the year, we right back where we started from. No championship. I know. You come over to the Alabama side, man. I've been I've been a no my whole life. I ain't gonna give up on them. <laughs> I'm gonna hang with them. Uh, at um, some point, you just realize it ain't going anywhere. Probably not. <laughs> but you know what? That ain't that ain't gonna be the end of the world for me because yeah, I don't I don't worry about it as much as I used to. But that's what you. Uh, what is your sport? You like baseball? Well, you know, I came up uh, in high school. I played football, played baseball, played uh, ran track, threw the shot put. Uh, really liked playing baseball, but I probably was a better football player, yeah. you know. Uh, but did enjoy playing baseball. Uh, hurt my back my senior year and basically about put me out for the whole season. I was really bummed over not being able to play my senior year mm. baseball. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I grew up, man. It was, you know, you, you finished football, you went straight to track. You finished track. Your track, track and baseball would overlap, you know. Oh, yeah. And then you finish baseball in, in summer, you'd start back your summer workouts. I mean, you know, but all that stuff, being involved in all that stuff and having great coaches, parents to push you, uh, it kept me out of trouble, man. It, yeah, kept, it kept me, it kept me, it kept me in the right place, uh, kept me on the right path. That's right. Uh, and and you know, I think I've been blessed for it. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, you do a little bit of weightlifting. You mean you, you you didn't mention that part? Yeah, I used to. When I was in college, I power lift. I mean, lifted mm -hmm. a lot, you know. And uh, but man, I tell you, I, I see these folks now that lift that stuff. And when you get older, man, that, that heavy weight yeah, it'll start really taking anyway. a little toll on mm -hmm. you. Right. And uh, I, I, you know, I recommend to folks, man, you you can get huge, and that you ain't got to lift heavy weight. That's I right. Mean, you really can. Uh, but you know that deal, boy, when you're young, 26, 27 years old, you go in that weight room, you ain't fixing to let nobody outlift you. Oh, no. no, no, no. <laughs> you ain't going to let them outlift you. You know, so, but, oh, I, I, I really did. I used to love working out. I just I just kind of got back away from it a little bit. Uh, man, I done had three shoulder surgeries. I tore wow. my pec. You know, I mean, it's just, it was time to slow down. <laughs> it wears on you. It yeah, does. It does. The, the, the older you get, you can't. Pick that heavy stuff up, no man. More. You look at uh, you look at like these big power lifters and bodybuilders. Oh, uh, Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman. Coleman. Oh, yeah. That joker can't even walk. I mean, he's just. I mean, you know, and and of course Arnold's about the same way. Yeah. You know, of course, you know Ronnie was he was huge, huge, and strong. I mean, he uh, that guy was almost a freak of nature. Yeah. But uh, man, is he paying for it? Yeah. Woo. It, it, it is he, he's still living, isn't he? Yeah, he's still yeah living. I thought he yeah. was. Uh, yeah, man, I saw I saw a deal the other day. I didn't know if it was current or not, but it showed him. I think he was still in a. Looked like he was still in a weight room, 
But man, he was walking. I had a, somebody video with him. Oh man, I mean, he can't even hardly walk. He, he's uh, all that heavyweight. It, it wears you down on the inside. With, with, especially when you get to that level yeah. of heavyweight. And that's I mean, what it does. You, man, you got guys out there now squatting almost a grand. I mean, I'm just telling you, brother. That's true. That's a lot of weight. I can't. That's, no, I'm not I can't going. Even go <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not interested in getting under a grand. You just got to imagine that weight, uh, the more it's, it's putting all the pressure, putting on your joints back. and your bones oh, back. God. And uh, it, it took, because, you know, I'm, I was like you. I go in the gym, and I might not do anything. Then see somebody, and I'm going to put all the weight on that just because I want to. I ain't going to let you outdo me. I'm going to oh, let yeah. you know right now you ain't going to outdo me <laughs> until somebody comes in and they can do three times more than you, and then you just take the weight off, and you're going back in the back. <laughs> well, you know, I tell you, we used to have a nice weight room over at Boyd um, mm -hmm. at, at, at their corporate office, and uh, I was over one day, had a guy spot me. And I didn't have a, you know, I think I had four, maybe 425, 450 on there. It's a lot of weight. Yeah. And uh, I had done like 425 or so the week before. And, uh, man, I got down there and, I mean, he just unracked it, got it. Because I always have to have help unracking because yeah. I got short arms. Yeah. He got it unracked. And, man, when I started down like that, I mean, it's, and I mean, that thing oh, just yeah. ripped slamming. Yeah. Dude. I mean, it tore it slamming. My chest came to the middle right there where it Dang. ripped out from underneath there. And uh, of course, once you do that, I mean, the, you know, the orthopedic the doctor told me, he said, he said, I'd never get under 225 more than that. He said, if that thing rips again, we really got a problem. Wow. He said, scar tissue don't go back together real good. So uh, anyway, I'd have a choice then. That ended yeah. my heavy weight. <laughs> <laughs> good Lord took care of that for me, yeah. which was probably a nice little warning. That that, hey, you need to get away from this stuff. And the older you get, you can't do it anymore. No. Nah. Well, you, 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 your mind will tell you you can, but your muscles won't. Mine get you in trouble. You better believe it will in more Mine ways than you, one. Under some weight, you can't get weight Monday. That's exactly right. And um, even if you do, they you're so sore, it, it, you don't heal up as fast no more. True. That. So it might take a week or two weeks for you to get back. It's not worth. It's not even worth the hassle. Nope. I, I know. I tried um, as a story. I was in Planet Fitness. It was me, Adrian, and Jeffrey. So I said, Adrian, I need you to spot me. He came over there. I had like four twenty-five on about four. He looked at me. He said, "What you want me to do?" I said, "If he get on, get on me, get, on me, get it off." Looked at me again. He said, "What you want me to do?" I said, I can get it. Just if I get caught, just help me get it up. Once again, what you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> so, get it off. <laughs> I got it up and got it off me. But the point is, is after that, I couldn't do it no more because I was sore. My, my arms had locked up. And if I wouldn't have got it up, I was in trouble because he was going to have to pick it up because I couldn't. There's no way I was yeah. going to pick anything. Oh, up. I get it. I get it. But uh, that's why I just quit doing it. I just stopped doing little weights. More reps does the same thing. Absolutely. So that's that's one of the. And it'll keep you out of the keep you out of the hospital. Please. It will. <laughs> it will. I've seen a man in uh, Jim tear towards tear his whole bicep. Just, Was that? I think Scott that works with us, Scott yeah. Mattis. I think he's done that before. Wow. And maybe Brian mm -hmm. or did Brian? One of them ripped their tricep, I believe. I it might forget, be Brian. I, I forget like which a, one it was. I but. think it was. I remember hearing that name. Um, I, I had just left the gym when he did it, so I didn't see him, but I heard about it. It, said it was just hanging off, and I'm like, that is, that's uh, tough. Man, I don't, mm, yeah, they, it's not worth that. It really is not, and um, that's why I don't do it anymore. I'm I do a lot more walking now. Yep. Um, well, that's one of the things, too, that I enjoy about turkey hunting, too, is you typically do a lot of walking, yeah. you know, and I love to get out in the woods. I just love being in the woods, man. It ain't a killing it's just being out there when, you know, when the sun's coming up and everything's waking up and the birds are chirping. And, you know, I heard an old guy one time, a matter of fact, a guy named Toxie Hayes that owns Mossy Oak Camouflage. He made a statement one time that, man, I, I, I truly love. He, he said, good Lord's only going to give me so many sunrises and I'm going to try not to miss one. That's right. I mean, I love that. I love that <laughs> saying. Uh, heard him say that a long time ago. And that, that, that's so true. Uh, I love morning time. Now, being outdoors has a, a, a small disadvantage because there's something called snakes out there. 
Yeah. And I know you ran across a few of them. You know, I saw one yesterday. We were easing along a little old logging road there. I was in my golf cart. Mm -hmm. I had uh, Thomas's son, Ridge, with me. Mm -hmm. We was on there, and I seen him curled up. I just backed up, and I pointed right there. I said, it was just a black snake. Oh, I mean, okay. they're good. Yeah. You know, they eat other snakes, yeah. actually. Uh, and I told him, I said, look right there, curled up. He looked, oh, that snake, you know, get all excited. Yeah. But, you know, when you, and that's the thing about when you take kids out in the woods like that, man, take the time to teach them. Exactly. Yeah. You know, show yeah. them stuff. But, you that's know, right. I love to show them stuff. Like, I was showing him yesterday. We went yesterday afternoon and did a little hunt, but we also were going to try to roost a turkey. And we were kind of looking around at some areas where we had heard some. And I was pointing out to him on the ground, showing him the strut marks from the wings. And I say, you know, typically when you find an area like this, uh, you know, a turkey is usually spending a lot of time in there. That's kind of his little strut zone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was showing him about that, showing him the drag marks in the dirt and all. But, you know, I, I love to, those kids out there for that first, you know, man, we can, we can do so much to help them, Amen. you know, That's right. lead them in the right direction. And, of course, Shannon and Thomas, and, and with, with their kids, they are fabulous parents to their children. And I was, I was talking to Reed yesterday about that. I told him, I said, man, you are one blessed kid to have the parents you got. And I that's said, right. don't ever take that for granted. So uh, that's important. But just, you know, just in talking to children about that and just making them understand just, you know, important things in life, man. That's it. Uh, of course, I know that they're, they're, they're raised well, and yeah. I, I couldn't do anything to improve what Thomas and Shannon have done with their kids, mm -hmm. but I can help build on it, you know? it. Uh, but, but good people, man, good yeah. kid. Man. How do you like to cook? you like to fry your turkeys or do you like to put them in the oven? Nah, I'm, I'm a fry man. Fry yeah, man. I, man. I can't know. do it, but I, I, I've heard about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a frying thing. I mean, and, and the thing about frying turkey is what a lot of people don't realize is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a wild game. It's lean. So, you know, you can overcook it real yeah. easy. A lot of folks, you know, they'll, they'll fry them up and they'll, they'll fry them too long. And man, <laughs> it's like eating daggum jawbreakers, <laughs> you know, but it's turkey fried. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you don't need to over fry it cause it, it'll get a little firm on you. So. I think you've tried to fry it. You fried one before, right? Yeah. Oh, you talking about fire, yeah, frying yeah, not, the whole not, not, one? The whole turkey, yeah. but the whole nah, turkey. Really and truly on, on a wild turkey, to be honest with you, the breast is about the only thing that's really oh, okay. much to eat. The, the legs have got so many, you know, being wild, they got so many tendons and all that. I mean, oh. you really can't hardly eat them. The thighs are okay. Uh, I like the thighs myself because I like the darker meat. Yeah. You know, I like that. I like dark meat going with chicken. But uh, but anyway, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, frying the whole turkey wild, man, it, it that thing will get dry in a hurry. I mean, it'll get real dry in a hurry. You got to be careful. That wasn't, you just fried no, 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 the no, when you, you, when you fry, you need to drop butter ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. Butter that's ball. Yeah, yeah, no got all that extra fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to fry a butter ball, yeah, not, that's, not that's, wild. Yeah, that's a lot of things people don't understand about wildlife deer and stuff. They try to cook it like you cook uh, domestic. Yeah. I say, well, what, you know, like a cow sure. or something. Yeah. But that's, that's not how, because it is a wild animal. Oh, it's don't have near the yeah, fat. Yeah, no, yeah. It's lean, man. Yeah, yeah. They ain't folks pouring out trolls out yeah, there and feeding them. Yeah, they yeah. they get them fat. Yeah. They getting them fat for us to eat. Yeah. Them, them out there in the wild, wild hog. Exactly. It, it, it's way different. I cleaned one, a friend of mine cleaned one, and I was showing him, he was trying to show me, yeah, they, they eat mussels, because they run. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they. It's a lot different it, eating. And and you kill a turkey the first of the season, you know he he'll you know versus killing one at the end of the season. Man, I've seen you know they probably lose, they could lose three or four pounds. Yeah. Because I mean they they don't, I mean they're eating, but just enough to get by whenever they're you know whenever the, the you know because I mean they're doing all this like the deer yeah. rut, they're yeah. trying to breed the hens. So, um, interesting sport. Though. So you can you eating a wild hog. Yeah. Is it any different than the other one? A whole lot different. What's different about it? it? A lot of, I think a lot wild of cooking. Hog. Oh, it's, it's way leaner. I yeah. mean, just like he's better? As far as the taste? I don't know about that. Yeah. I, I think, think it got I something to do with the cook. Who cooking, oh. which, you know, because some people don't know how to cook wild game. Exactly. So that's that's where the breakdown comes from. I don't know how to cook any of them. Well, number <laughs> one on like a wild hog, you know, you don't, you don't want to eat a boar. I mean, they're going to be oh. strong. Yeah. You're going to want a sow and, and, you know, something within that, you know, 50, 60, 70 pound range, somewhere around in there, even lighter. 
is what you want. I mean, you don't want to eat no 300-pound sow. I mean, you can, mm. but I'm just telling you, that smaller <laughs> yeah. one's probably going to be a little better yeah. than yeah. that big one. So, uh, you, You'll tell it different, you know, like if you eat a chicken in the yard and mm. then you go buy one, you're going to taste it different. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Just like a tomato. If you plant a tomato in your garden and then go to the grocery store, you're going to see a much different in it. Dude, I knew it was going to be. A, I, I knew it was going to be a good Sunday when you'd see my grandmother on Saturday afternoon walking out to that chicken yard with that mop handle. Yeah, <laughs> you knew that fit to be some French fried chicken, baby. Yeah, yeah. She'd take that mop handle, wrap one of them upside the head, and take it, and, and basically she'd boil water, yep. dip them down yeah. in the water, yep. and get the feathers yep. off. You know, when you when you and you do a wild turkey like that, you put them in boiling water, and the feathers almost fall yeah, off of really. them. You know, and she. would She'd do that, get all the feathers off those things and clean them and cut them up and fry them. Man, that's some good stuff. Whole there. different, whole different. I've actually killed a chicken. Now, I know how to kill a chicken, but that's about what a buck stops at. I have done nothing else beyond the oh, chicken. Yeah. She can do it all. I mean, she, you know, she, uh, uh, she had a rooster one time. I'll never forget that thing. And buddy, you'd get in that yard. You'd be perfectly fine as long as you're looking at him, turn your back on him. That joker would nail you, son. I'm telling you. And uh, he got fried. <laughs> when he spurred, when he spurred Murtis, he got fried. He got fried. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that's a uh, but with your job, that's which is stressful because you deal with a lot. At you one know, time. It, it is, Anthony. It, it, it can be stressful, man. But a lot of that stress, I think people bring on themselves, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I some things, I mean, I, I I try not to worry about the things that I can't control yeah. and, and focus on the things that I can. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, I don't know. I just, I, I've learned to cope with things a little bit better. But, man, when you got, you know, when you got like Stephen, he, he's wonderful to work for. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's patient. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, he lets you do your job. If, if he's got a question about something, he'll ask you, but he's kind. Yeah. Uh, and man, I'm telling you, I, to, to have a boss like that, uh, it, it's just, uh, it, it's uh, I mean, it makes it, 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 easier, it, makes it right? way easier, yeah. man, it does. Cause I, you know, Steven, he knows my best interest is that company and, mm -hmm. uh, and taking care of the people. And he, that's what Steve, he's, you know, Steven's not a big people person, but he understands the importance of it. That's mm. like he told me. He said, "I hired you for that." You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. but but I'm telling you, he cares about drivers and that company. Uh, it, it's you know, you just, everybody's got different personalities. It takes everybody in a company to make it work. That's right. You know, uh, some folks more outgoing, some are less. Some, you know, I mean, it it, it just takes us all. And yeah. uh, uh, man, we're blessed. I mean, it's you know, we did something back at uh, back at the first of the year. We kind of well, matter of fact, we cut recruiting off. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, right. you know, I told folks, I said, look, you know, freight's got a little slower. Uh, thank goodness it's picking back up. But freight, freight had got a little bit slower, especially right after the first of the year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I know we were going to have trouble loading all our trucks, yeah. you know. So I was like, why do we want to bring in more when we know we're going to struggle loading? Because, you know, we've got our group of drivers out there that, you know, they're, they've been with us, you know, I wish they all drivers would be that way, but some of them are just always looking for greener grass. Yeah. Be careful of that greener grass or what might right. be under it. That's right. Maybe a septic tank. It could. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but I mean, but but understand. I, I anyway, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll I'll get off my soapbox there, but you know, it's. But what you saying it's like a, a support system. You have it's very important to have totally, those totally, man, line. totally, and I and I and, and I, you know, I can't do it all. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I can't do it all, and I mean, it's, you know, Frankie helps a lot on the inside sales part mm -hmm. and the dispatch and all. Doug handles safety and recruiting and all. Yeah, I'm there for them. I'm helping them, but you know, I I have to monitor everything. Yeah. You know, and keep an eye on everything and. Uh, but man, when you got good lieutenants, it, it makes it, it easy. It makes it, it easy. You know what, what? To me, one of the most satisfying things in my job, and it, and it happens often out there. I'll call in one of you know, talk to John in the shop, or talk to Ronnie Bozeman, kind of the special projects guy, or talk to Doug or whatever, and you'll question something and ask them about this, and and the response you back. Well, yeah, we saw that. We looked at, and this is what we're already doing for. It. You know, people people are just stepping out and, and taking care of things, you okay. know. They see something that's wrong, they fix it. 
That's they don't right. have to come to me for that, you know. That's right. uh, so yeah. that's the kind of culture I want, you yeah. know. Uh, we're not 100% there yet, but we're going to continue to get better. Um, but, you know, I want to continue. We're doing some things now with, this, with these RFID stickers on these trailers. We're mm -hmm. going to get here pretty soon to where we'll either have an app for the phone or we'll have something in the driver's lounge you can look at. But we'll actually have that yard mapped and we'll have your trailer. You'll be able to look and see where your trailer is wow, in that yard. Man. I like that now. And uh, so, I, you know, I, I, got, I, I get out there every morning and I pull on that yard and I'll pull back there usually around those tankers and I'll, and I'll just sit there and watch in my white truck. And I watch that stuff. And I stopped one of the guys that, that shuttles for the lead company the other day and I asked him, I said, let me ask something. I said, when you're coming over here to get a trailer, I said, you know what trailer number you're going to get? Yes, sir. I said, do you know where it is? No, sir. I said, how long it take you to find it? He said, sometimes you can look for one for 10 or 15 minutes. Could yep. be 20 minutes. I said, what if you every time you came over here, you knew exactly where your trailer was? He said, boy, it'd be awesome. So you think about that, that guy's coming back and forth from that lead plant every mm -hmm. day. And I mean, he, he's liable to come get 30, 40 trailers. Mm -hmm. And you think about how much more efficient he'll be if he, every time he goes to our yard, he goes straight to that trailer oh, and see. shaves 10 or 15 minutes off every trip. So he has a lot of time. Even a regular driver. Yeah. You know, I can save you, it, just say for instance, one of, you, one, one of our drivers on the yard, they're you know getting a the load, they're going home for the weekend. And they know right where their trailer is. He goes and gets that trailer and he gets home. He's got five minutes left on his clock. Yeah. I just got that guy home. That's right. Yep. You That's know what I'm saying? Right. Yep. That's exactly 20 right. minutes can yep. be sure difference can. in a great day or a terrible day. That's right. So anything we can do on that yard, I call it taking the slack out of the system. But that's what we're trying to do. And, and it takes time. And, you yep. know, we're, we're what we're going to do, another one of the things we're going to do here before too much longer we got to get on this project is – is uh, on the back side. You know how a lot of times you can pull in and fuel and go. Mm -hmm. We're gonna come outside of, of where the uh, fuel, I mean where the uh, oil change is, mm -hmm. and put another pump there. So that you know, some they're already fueling up trucks yeah. that come through uh, whenever they're doing the uh, uh, oil change and all. Mm -hmm. They can fuel in there, but if we put it outside. Then when somebody comes in and this is busy over here, they can just pull up in here and fuel and go. Yo, oh, that would save so much time. It save time too. So that's sure. another project that, that we've yeah. got on the radar that we I'm trying to get this RFID stuff done. Yeah. And it that has been pretty tough because there's just not everybody that does it. Some of those systems, they folks want to come in and charge you two hundred thousand yeah. dollars and uh our our IT folks have figured out a way to do it a lot less expensive, but it's going to work great. So, oh, right. uh, well, so we're, about. you know, I don't, that, that's the thing that I like to get out there because I know sometimes drivers get out there and they have a, something happens on that yard and they think, man, these folks, I promise you, we're looking at everything. We're trying to get better at everything. So when you hear somebody frustrated, share that with them. Share you know? with them. Share yes. it with them. Cause I, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. I see you in the mornings. Cause I actually, I passed you this morning when I was coming out of it. I, I knew where you were going. I've seen you back there before. I had no clue that's what you was doing back mm -hmm. there. I said, but uh, you always got something you, you're working on up your sleeve. I am. Of course, I look at the trailers, and, and, and Chuck Mosley, it's over our trailer shop. If I see a trailer, like I found one this morning out there, that gum skirt was about tore off one side of it, you know. So I took a picture of the trailer number in the trailer and sent it to Chuck and said, hey, man, uh, just helping you out here. We got a trailer out here with a bad skirt on it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I just do that to help out. I that's mean, right. I'm not trying to – finger point or micromanage that's or anything it. I have. Yeah. I'm out there on the yard. If I see a problem, I point it out to somebody. Maybe that helps them. Helps that's the not driver. micromanaging in my book. It helps the driver. Exactly. When they come through an inspection, they see it. Now I'm held up yeah, no. 15, 20 more minutes yeah. when it could have been fixed already. There you go. That's, so that, that's what we want to get rid of. So that works out great. Well, Trey, we ain't going to hold Mr. Parker. We ain't going to hold your bunk. We know <laughs> you're a busy man. Well, one thing you need to understand, Mr. Parker died in 2016. That was oh, so my dad. I'm Trey. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, we show well, appreciate Before you go, I want, I want right. to ask you something. Yes, sir. So, as the president of a company, seeing the distress and the, the joy that it brings at the same time, you know how you stressful, but it still brings joy. So, give us some advice on about what we're doing to help us keep going. Because it do get stressful from time having different mindsets, so help us with that. Uh, I can tell you one thing, uh, man, you gotta have some Jesus in your business. I'm gonna tell you that. 
it starts there. A whole lot of him. Man, let me tell you something. I pray to him every day to help me through the day. Mm-hmm. And he does. Yeah. But that's that's the, that's what um that that's where it's gotta start. But but you know, man, the, the thing about I don't know, I, I guess my love of people, you know, probably helps drive me, but uh man, I just look for ways to help people. Uh you know, sometimes it can be the smallest little thing that you do. Sometimes it, it can be something you say to somebody, just something, you know, it's, it, it's these, my grandmother used to call them small acts of kindness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as y'all can see, I love my family. You do. And uh, that's very understanding. I really do. But uh, strong family mm-hmm. behind you. Uh, I've always said that about a, about a truck driver. I've always said we used to have these million mile celebrations up there with Boyd, uh, and I'd always say behind a you know behind a good man there's a great woman, mm-hmm. and man that support from home mm-hmm. uh, is so important to a driver out there on the road. Uh, oh my gosh, the kids, the problems she deals with, and man we get that. That's why we work hard to get these folks home when they yeah. need to be home. I you know. That's one thing that I hear in that company is is I hear people say, you know, hey, I had a problem, and and when I let Wiley know, you know, they jump through hoops. I mean, we we flown people home, you know, that wow. had emergencies in their family. I mean, I, I remember when I, not long after I started out there, a uh, guy had a death in his family, and he was, gosh, I forget where he was, and we got the truck parked secured. We put him on a plane, flew him home to get to his yeah. family, and I mean. You know, you, you can sit here and talk, I love drivers, and mm-hmm. I'm going to take care of everybody. But, man, they don't ever know till you show them. That's right. You know? Amen. Uh, Dempsey Boyd was owner of Boyd Brothers Transportation. Very smart man. Loved him to death. Uh, his old statement he always used to always say, he say, people never know how much you care till you show them. That's right. Amen. And he always said, you teach people how to treat you. That's Amen. right. Amen. If you're good to people. I guarantee you, nine times out of the time, they're gonna be good to go ahead. Don't you? Well, before you, you before you go though, we want to leave you with something. We don't want you to come. But at the same time, when you and I like what you said earlier about Frankie, you have people that you count on also. Yes, yes sir. That's people that's uh, that you go to, uh, Frankie, Derek, uh, the ones that hire kids that give you advice. Right. So you don't do anything without your support system. And, and you, you know, and you was like that at Max too when uh, the dispatch <clears throat> over there. Oh yeah, but you know, people when they come to when I first started out there, folks came to you with problems. Mm-hmm. But but now that we've got folks in the places we've got them, you know, they come to me now, but they already have a solution. They just let me know. Yeah, that's good. Now me to me, companies that are run like that, that I mean that. Because man, if you got a manager out there like Doug, if he's got a problem, dude, if he can solve that problem like that and take care of that driver like that, and that guy sees that and can get back to doing what he needs to do, that's what we need to do. He don't need right. have to come to me for every solution. That's exactly right. Handle that problem. Now we'll talk about some of it. And if I think he handled it wrong, I'm not gonna say anything. And one on one, I'll say, you know, you might, might should have done that a little bit different there. Mm-hmm. But 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 it's okay. It got handled. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna point him out out there in front of people. We'll do it behind closed doors and I'll use that as a coaching opportunity. Yeah. You know, so and I'll be the first to say I don't have all the answers either. So (laughs) understand that. Well it it was we we appreciate you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come up here and talk to us. We thank you. Yes, sir. And uh, thank y'all for what you do. And I man, I Anytime you need me up here, holla at me, brother. I'll be glad to help you out. We definitely will be calling you back again. Well, we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with the Faith and Work All with it. Anthony Knight, Adrian Brown. I'm Anthony Knight from the nonprofit group Let's Talk About It Ministry. You also might see me on the Faith and Work All with my co host, Adrian Brown. We firmly believe and stand behind our community. Our organization is predicated on our three bricks, which is our foundation attainable living, physical and mental health sustainability, and educational awareness. We also support good health, a good state of mind, and a decent way of living. But we need your help. You can donate to us on our Zelle account, Cash App, Let's Talk Files, and PayPal. 
The number for all three is 334-722-0813. If you can't donate, please go to our YouTube channel. It's free. It's Let's Talk About It Ministry. Hit like and subscribe. Now, we know what our mission is. Let's go to work. Welcome back to the Faith and Work Hour with your host, Anthony Knight, and my co-host, Elder Adrian McBride. We want to, once again, thank Trace Parker for spending a little time with us, getting a little insight on what he do and what, how he relaxes. So we want to very much appreciate him. And he has some good tips about weightlifting that the older you get, you cannot do it <laughs> like you used to. Um, there's a few topics that I want to get into. The first one is we want to send our condolences to all the people that was affected by the shooting in Dadeville, Alabama. Um, that was four people killed and 28 injured. And Man. That is a, that's devastating because nobody wants to be at a, from what we understood, a Sweet 16 party and tragedy strikes of that nature. Um, they still don't know who did it, right? They don't know who did it. Uh, you, you know, it, it's one thing when you read about it. Because normally it's in Texas and California, and it still affects you the same way. But when it gets close to home, it, it really gets a little bit more of your attention. That, you know, we might think that since we stay in Alabama that things like this don't happen. Yep. But we found out that it does. Yep. And, uh, you know, we just want to give our prayers out to the, the family of the ones that was lost. We want to help. We want to uh, ask for a speedy recovery for the 28 that was injured. Um, that was nothing about this situation that should have happened. This this never should have happened. Um, I don't care what you're going through. Um, whatever the situation is, there's no place to take the life of innocent people, and um, that's something that should never have happened. Yeah, just that love for humanity somewhere <clears throat> we got to start standing guard and praying and covering each other now because it's getting rough you're hearing about somebody bringing a gun to a 16 birthday party that's that's something to somebody watchmen got to get back on watch duty but yeah hey amen it's, it's just it's devastating man and i don't care where it's at um even if you wasn't directly affected, mm -hmm. you indirectly affected because you was there, you've seen it. And I, and I read that the uh, school has offered a counseling program for the kids that was there. Because if, if you see some of your classmates injured, that affects you mentally. Yeah. Oh, amen. Because, you know, my nephew was at a party. Yeah, I remember that. You know, so that when I heard that, I said, man. It's devastating. Yeah. Because um, everybody that's affected in these unnecessary, unnecessary acts of violence, um, look at the families that you that that are being affected. Look at the ones that are being affected that didn't have anybody injured, um, but their kids seen it. That visual, yeah, sometimes is just as worse as the act itself, because you seen it. I have never seen that before, not in person. But I'm sure that it would affect me when I seen one of my friends that uh, that I grew up with and went to school with, and I, I seen something tragic happen to them. Um, I, I just don't see how that wouldn't mentally affect me. Yeah. And these kids are 16, um, 17, whatever the age group is, they have never seen anything like that. And That's to experience that. You don't want that's a phone call you don't want. And um, it makes parents, um, and I know a lot of people say their parents are overprotective, but these are some of the reasons why they would be. You know, not saying that was going to stop anybody from doing anything, but it's just to the point that you do not want to get a call at 10 o'clock because nine times out of 10, if, if police or state trooper calling you, there's nothing good coming out of this conversation. And the last thing any parent wants to do is bury their kids. That's that's something no parent, and, and unfortunately, that's it has happened. Yeah. Um, 
But we all we just want to send our prayers out to all the victims. We want to send our prayers out to the ones that was not affected but was there. We wanna we wanna I wouldn't want to thank the school for opening up a um, 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 a counseling. So it was, it was at a school. No, the school has opened up a counseling to the oh, kids. Oh, the school did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. they went to that school. Okay. Yeah, they went to that school. Okay, so they, I, I, I okay. like that the school has opened yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A counseling. And these are. That's something. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Well, you need that because um, yeah. you, you never know what a person is thinking. Yeah. And you don't know what um, what a tragedy, a tragedy like that, how that affects anybody. Because everybody's going to be affected differently. Everybody's going to uh, deal with it differently. Some people deal with it through counseling. And some people deal with it through isolation. Yeah. Um, but we 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 want to um, advise that. And once again, we're not medical professionals, so we're not portraying them. But when a tragedy like that happens, you always want to monitor your kids. You want to make sure they're not acting any differently. They know if they all of a sudden they was vocal, and then all of a sudden they start isolating themselves, being by themselves. Um, they have things they're dealing with. Yeah. That we might not know they're dealing with, uh, or they might be reaching out for help, and we just don't. We didn't look at it that way. Yeah. So we want to make sure um, that you can speak on this because you had a relative that was involved in something similar. I had um, uh, my one of my nephews uh, got murdered um, at a party. I think it was an engagement party or anniversary party. I forgot. <clears throat> yeah. So to. Uh, Get a phone call with somebody going to enjoy themselves, wind down, whatever. Uh, and then a lot of times, these be, <clears throat> I don't know about this jealousy or this envy. People had that much hate in their heart to take somebody, you know, uh, you know, for, I don't know, we don't know if it was a 16 year old, how old a person, yeah. we don't know nothing about it. But if it was a child at that age, 16, 17 years old, that committed this crime, I just think about what he could be going through. What could have been going through his mind? What 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 motivated him? What was the force behind him to say, to make this okay? You know, uh, we can say parents, we can say home training and stuff, but we know people don't come from good homes. Yeah. We know people don't, but sometimes peer pressure, like we talked about in one of our earlier episodes about peer pressure, Sometimes people just want to be in charge of things and whatever it may be, you know, we have to really stand guard and start praying because that, that was a, a a lot of, to my family, that, that, that was a big, but the people that were surrounded witnessed a murder right in their face. Yeah. To see something like that, you know, that that's rough. Yeah, that's rough. And uh, some of this stuff lasts with people Years and years and some. Oh yeah. Um, so somebody, I'll never it. two people losing their life. Somebody gonna go to jail. Yeah. And somebody's not living. And that's the yeah. uh, disappointing part of it because it, it's it's a, it's a situation that didn't necessarily have to happen. It didn't have to happen. It didn't have to happen. It, it could have, have um, been avoided. Yeah. Um, but we don't know if the young man that was. What he was going well, through. No, what it, what, yeah, yeah. What, what what was going on for somebody to feel like this was okay or what? Because it's something drove that mindset. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's why I said we have to get back into prayer in those positions of praying because see a lot of stuff going on now that I don't know, man. Oof, that's that's it's a lot of going on and it's getting younger and younger. It's not old older people. Well, I know you got a Bible verse you want to read. So oh, yes, sir. I got one in him. Let you go ahead. This Bible verse is coming from Esther, the seventh chapter in the third verse. And I'll be reading from the King James. Then Esther the king, the <laughs> then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if, and if it be pleasing, the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. Amen. And, um, you know, sometimes these things happen and, and, and Bible verses the only thing we can go to to get comfort. A lot of people go to that for comfort. Um, 
what he said, Trey said a good thing about family. Uh, Cause I like to work a lot, but when he said about that really touched me about, uh, I don't want to do nothing that gonna take me from my spouse. Yeah, you know. Uh, so that 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 was that was uh, that 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 spoke volume. And 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 I'm glad that he uh, is an easy person to talk to. Very. Uh, open up to you and let you know who he is. He close to his family. So yeah, we appreciate him. And we thank him. Once again, we want to send our prayers and our condolences to the people in Delville who lost loved ones. Amen. Uh, the ones who was injured, we hope for a speedy recovery. And the Amen. ones that were not affected, that seen it mentally, we want, we want to Amen. hope that you can uh, get counseling if need be and to do everything in your power to try to put this behind you, which is easier said than done. Amen. We will be back next Wednesday, the same time, same place, with your host, Anthony Knight, my co-host, Elder Nage McBride. Don't go anywhere. Have a safe day. And for my truck driver friends, keep on rolling. Amen.